around that time, you know, when the riots occurred, it felt like there was a trade-off of sorts um, because you could see a large enough mass in the country of India saying, you know, this communal life is not leading us anywhere. Like we're, you know, we're cobbling and bickering among each other. There's no real economic progress. But at the same time, if we embrace this wave of neoliberalism that was sweeping across the across the world, we could participate in this new transparent economic boom of sorts. Um, and so I brought that up because I think that links to my early experiences of the word nonviolence. And a lot of that, you know, as an 11, 12, 13 year old, like that word landed on me, you know, in conversations in, in social contexts where people were, you know, speaking about nonviolence in a fairly negative light because you could see a very devolved version of how Gandhi might have practiced nonviolence. Misinterpreting nonviolence as a way to, to how would you say, um, to enforce some of these values. Um, and so, yeah, so I would say I had, I received a very distorted form understanding of nonviolence and that definitely biased my understanding it in, I would say in my formative years, like, you know, going into my twenties. Um, and so going into business school, going into capital markets, it was very much about embracing this new system of abundance or perceived abundance um, while letting go of, you know, these, these quaint old ideas. I should reframe that. I'm not saying I'm, I didn't want to be successful. I, I entered into that journey with a sense of this is required i don't know why and i don't know if i will win um but i think there is a certain joy associated with finding that battle worth finding that hill worth dying on um and i think that requires a certain amount of nonviolence because you are disarming you know in that process um and so i think there's a steadfastness in nonviolence that is very very attractive I was always holding this friction around, oh, I can't, you know, if I create a system, it's going to create violence in this way and that way and that way. And so I like the way both Gandhi and Vinoba frame their understanding of systems and nonviolence. And I might be paraphrasing, but I think Gandhi said something like organizing or creating systems is an opportunity to practice nonviolence. Um, whereas Vinoba said all kinds of organizing, all kinds of systems will create violence. Um, and I think they're true, both true. Um, and so I think understanding that if I am vested in creating a system, in creating plumbing, it's by very nature, I will affect violence on people. Um, like this is like, that is the nature of organizing. Um, and so one being okay with it, but two understanding systems are less likely to create violence when they are appropriate. Um, it is when we use these outdated systems in non-contextual ways or create like these highly uncontextual systems that just get smashed onto entire countries of billion people that starts creating violence. It is important for us to design a system where something like collaboration is not the fair play award, you know, that you win on the side or like the critics choice award, but needs to be front and center. Informational economies scale with good grammar. And that's very interesting because what you're really doing is like orchestrating and modulating the cultural economy more than the material economy. And so to connect back to your yin yang example, I think what we're moving towards is not just European settler material economy growth, but I think an interplay between material and cultural economy. And so we're looking at scale as a language and not scale as accumulation of material resources. We are seeing inequality shooting through the roof. I think it is going to accelerate to never seen before levels. I think we're already in never seen before levels. I think it's going to continue. I think the lack of solutions for the climate crisis will continue to hit. I think the growth market wanting to perpetuate its illusion of growth will will affect violence on certain communities. Um, and so in that sense, my picture is very bleak, but it's also rosy in the sense like, I think we are in that territory of palliative, like, you know, the end is violent, but it, but it is the end. Like it is that 
the start of a new era that is coming at some point in this decade especially in the world that we're entering there is no universal consensus there is coordination through what we say mimetic bridges which is cultural bridges and so if there is another culture that doesn't abide by your model framework um learn how to mediate rather than enforcing so i think that shift from enforcement to mediation might be ahinsa in the world to come